If you are just beginning to use a smartwatch, then you will find there's a lot you don't know about. I mean, what is the aerobic and anaerobic exercise that you see on the smartwatches? What are VO2 max score, heart rate zone and stride? You get the point. In this video, I have explained all the metrics that a beginner should know about their smartwatches. Don't worry, I have cut down the jargon and explained them in the simplest way possible. Let's first start with aerobic and anaerobic activity. You go out on a run, your heartbeat starts pacing and your breathing becomes faster. This right here is the aerobic activity where you are maintaining and using the same level of energy. However, if you run as fast as you can, you will find that your heartbeat runs faster and breathing is a little difficult. This right here is the anaerobic activity. And while we work out or do any sports activity, we keep switching between the two. And using modern smartwatches, you can track exactly that. What portion of your activity was aerobic and which portion was anaerobic. There are benefits to both workouts. So if you are a beginner, don't think that you should have a high anaerobic score. In fact, you run a risk of injuring yourself by pushing yourself too much. The next metric is VO2 max. A lot of users confuse it with blood oxygen, thinking that the watch is telling their blood oxygen while running. However, that's not the case. The easiest way to explain is by giving an example. When you start running, as beginner, you will realize that after just short run, breathing becomes difficult, especially towards the end. But with time and practice, you will realize that the same distance no longer feels as difficult and even with heavy breathing you can run more. It happens because your body's endurance has increased and it can utilize the same amount of oxygen more efficiently. And VO2 max is the score that rates your oxygen utilization while running. One thing to note here is that wrist-based VO2 max is a good yardstick, but don't trust it. I mean you can rely on it if you are rocking a Garmin, Polar or other similar smartwatches. But please don't consider every smartwatch to provide you with reliable and accurate results. Because professional athletes who are training run on treadmills wearing scuba diving like masks to measure their VO2 max score. So wrist-based VO2 max isn't completely accurate. The next metric on the list is cadence. Now to put it simply, it is steps per minute or the number of revolutions per minute while cycling. This is a very important metric for runners as many times cadence is one of the main factors behind the slow speed. So smartwatches can help you in tracking your cadence. This can be a serious and very helpful metric for runners. However, its accuracy can be debatable as some watches require extra accessories to track and some don't. Cadence and stride together provide the complete picture of a runner. Stride is the distance your legs cover while running or walking. One thing to note here is that different users will have a different stride. Your age, build, height and a lot of other factors affect it. So there is no good or bad stride length. I mean you can work to improve it but that doesn't mean you have to. If you are satisfied with your performance then feel free to ignore it. Unless you are a professional athlete and your coach is advising you, in that case ignore me. One of the best metrics that can help in identifying whether or not your workout was successful is heart rate. Usually there are 4 to 5 heart rate zones in most smartwatches and they can help you in assessing whether your workout was low intensity, high intensity, aerobic or anaerobic. Heart rate zone tracking also allows you to track your ability to work for prolonged periods. In my opinion, this is one of the simplest metrics that you as a fitness enthusiast can look at to compare and assess your workout. So guys, those were the 5 smartwatch metrics that every beginner should know. Did I miss any of your favorite metric? If yes, then leave them in the comment down below and I will make a separate video on it. Also don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button to support our channel. I will be coming out with more informational videos like these in the future. With that, it's time to say goodbye, see you next time.